What's up, Chief? Okay, so there's a great chance we may well die soon. That's fantastic. Oh, hello there, friend, and welcome back to my humble... We should probably come up with a term for this, because if I keep saying bedroom, it's kind of depressing, and also a bit forward, maybe you don't want to come in my bedroom just yet? I'd actually like to start this video off with a thank you, because I didn't really know how it was going to go when I made a video about tabletop RPGs, and yet all of you were just really lovely, you folks were super welcoming about it, and it's that lovely reception of yours that has made me come back and return to the world of fluff. Okay, if you're new here though, then let me get you up to speed. Some time back, I made a video on how to make a character concept, a sort of fluffed, statless guide to making a character that would be fun to play in a tabletop game. If you want to check it out, there'll be a link in the description. This video is technically a follow-up, so honestly, you might be better watching it first, and then moseying on back, but hey, it's your choice. This time, we're going to be focusing on what your character looks like and how they act, and the different influences that can affect it. Now, once again, I'm not delving deep into the stats and math territory, because I fear if I get one thing wrong, someone will come out of my wall and beat me to death with a Casio calculator. Yes, as I stated before, we are delving back into the fluff, but while the last video was sort of like your industrial fluffing of a plushie, this time we're going to be focusing on the lovely exterior, or maybe posterior, because who knows, maybe you want to design a character with a great ass. Once again, I'm going to be using D&D as my basis because it's a game I'm much more familiar with. But hey, let's get into it. Okay, so if you watched my previous video, you might be getting a sense of deja vu right now. Yep, as always, one of the most important phases of any game like this with major character customization and story cooperation and collaboration, you should talk to your DM. They don't all live up to the stereotypes, they're not all here to kill you and take pleasure in it. Unless they are, some games are weird like that. Just like last time, you're going to want to know the general overall world vibe, which could maybe play a part in your character's appearance, garb or demeanour. Ask your DM how they interpret where your character comes from in the world. Maybe even ask for some keywords that could help with your production, and then combine their inspirations with your own. Or maybe deviate completely if that's what your character's like. Just like when you're building your concept and personality, keeping close and updating your DM with how you're wanting your character to look and act is only beneficial. Just like when you're building your concept and personality, keeping close with your DM and updating them is only beneficial. Alright, you've spoken to your DM, you've got an idea of the kind of character you're going to play, and you know whereabouts in the world you come from. It's time to start making what you look like. There are so many factors you can play with here, but let's start simple and get some inspiration from your stats. For example, maybe a character with high strength but low dex might be built like a bodybuilder, sacrificing speed for pure brute strength. And the inverse could be the opposite, a quite wiry looking character for a high dex, low strength look with a blend of the two being more akin to your superhero athletic build. You could even start factoring in your charisma stat. This isn't a hard and fast rule though, and in some cases it's actually quite fun to play with expectations. Maybe your character is incredibly good looking, but they just have the charisma of a brick. Another route you could use is your class. A fighter, for instance, might strategically choose to keep their hair short and keep themselves clean shaven, so a possible opponent doesn't have an easy target to grab. Or maybe you're a wizard who's been deep in books for a few months too long, and you might look a little shabby and unkempt. Or maybe they're the complete opposite and want to keep prim and proper at all times. These are all ideas you can go with, or defy. Some people might use alignment, but I tend to avoid that because I don't like the idea of an evil character typically having to be ugly. Maybe that's just because I have a thing for hot villains though. To actually bring back a point from the last video, once again, character creators might be a good resource to use. Websites like HeroForge can help, whilst games with more open form character creators like Skyrim can also be a good assistance. Lastly, and this is a point that's important for both DMs and players, you gotta keep respectful. 
Something that can help build your character is potentially using cultural references regards where your character is from. However, if you're going to start incorporating cultural garb inspired by a real country's deep roots, then please, for the love of whatever deity, be respectful. Really take the time to research it, and if you're deeply unsure, then just don't apply it. It's better to play with other people's thoughts in mind than playing ignorantly. Oh, also, if you're making a character who's a POC, especially a human, please don't resort to using stereotypes, and please don't compare your character's skin tones to food. Your character might be a snack, but they are not a snack. Please stop using food to describe people of colour. It's really lame. If you're making a character and it has an aspect that makes you think to yourself, will this make someone uncomfortable, then either don't do it, or at the very least, please bring it up with your DM and bring it up with your other players. Learn each other's boundaries and learn to respect them. After all, this is a cooperative story collaboration game. Okay, you've got some flesh on your character marionette. Now the question is, how are they going to act? And am I going to keep using flesh mannerisms? They're kind of disgusting. Now, your alignment is most likely going to be what guides your moral actions through this game, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to factor in your class or your background while you're at it. For example, say you're sent on a contract to kill a target. You might be a rogue who might stealth it up and make it look like it was just a simple accident, or maybe a deadly whispered message. Or perhaps you're more of a brute who'll just fuck someone up in plain sight because you're hard as hell. Or maybe you never really took this job in the first place because you're a paladin and your god doesn't look too kindly on assassination. This, however, is one hell of an example, so let's dial it back. Let's think about how your character acts around towns and around other people. Are they used to the hustle and bustle of the streets of cosmopolitan cities, or are they more attuned with the wilds? Or do they just hate everything and everyone? Do they work well in a team? I really hope they work well in a team because you're most likely going to be in a team. Another idea to consider is how will your character act after you've built up some renown and people start recognising you without prior meetings? This recently happened with my character Hereth, and he isn't really comfortable with it. What with the entire amnesia for six months thing. Maybe they know something about him that he doesn't know himself. However, maybe your character relishes in being known and being a hero, and it changes how they carry themselves in social situations. Maybe for the better, maybe they might start acting like a true paragon of justice and standing up for the little man. Or maybe for the worse and they just become a bit of a pompous jerk. A real fun part of this though is thinking about how your character acts in combat. Is it something they'd rather avoid and stay away from? Or is your character leading the charge up in the thick of it? This will most likely boil down to whatever kind of class you're playing as, but that doesn't mean you can't get creative with it. For example, one instance I absolutely loved lately was when my party was fighting a dragon. Our bard Theda hid away and clenched her fists so hard that at a point she started to draw blood, and she used this to cast Bane on the dragon. This carries a lot more weight than I cast Bane, and in some ways it's really fun to think about your character in this light. Now I know people might joke about this, and yes, not every DM needs to be Matt Mercer, you need to find your own flow. But at the same time, I think the concept of how do you want to do this when you're killing a major enemy is another time where you can get really creative. Maybe you're a rogue who's been waiting in the shadows the whole time and you slink yourself into a position to strike a vital point. Or you're a wizard who's just gotten a bit too pushed by this fight and your fire spells are almost breaching war crime territory. Maybe your background might play a factor too. For example, a town guard might have some martial knowledge but may just wail on an enemy, while a mercenary veteran keeps their strike singular yet brutal. Or maybe you're just barbarian -ing. and you're hacking and whacking and smacking. You just hack, whack, chop at me. But yes, how your character looks is much more than just their visual looks. It's also how they act, so you should get creative with that. Okay, so you know what you look like, and you know how you're going to act, and you've got a feel for the world. And that's fantastic, but you can't just come barging out the gate saying, I've got the shiniest magical armor, and I've got the biggest sword, and I'm going to kill everything! Because presumably, 
your first level. You've got what the rules say you have, or maybe you've bought something with your opening income, but armor and weapons needn't be one style fits all. There's still room here for personalization. I mean, the leather armor of Rogue Wars may well be very different from the leather armor a barbarian may strap to their body in haphazard ways. I'm going to be using my characters as examples for this, but also please do keep in mind that these are not hard and fast rules. The first thing to consider is, funnily enough, your armor, and how important it may be to how your character looks. Armor aesthetics can be a great way to differentiate your character from the crowd and also from other characters. Your party might have a paladin and a fighter, and they're both wearing some form of plate armor. So the paladin might well be a big, shining beacon, armor freshly polished, holy symbol on show, all nice and glinty, while your fighter might be wearing the same style of armor, but maybe it's slightly darker, maybe dented here and there, possibly dirty, or maybe covered in pelts due to their homeland's colder climate. For an extreme example of this, you can look at my character V2. Now for them, their armor is intrinsically attached to them, because they're a Warforged. The armor is quite literally their skin. Chances are though, that maybe your armor is more of a secondary aspect of your character, which is also totally viable. The character I'm currently playing, Hireth, has his chain shirt as more of a background element, underneath tattered cloaks and scarves, as well as some other personal effects. This is because I prefer him looking more out of sorts, and a tad out of his element due to his storyline. The armor is still there, it's just from a design perspective, it's taking a back seat. It's also worth thinking about your weapons in the same way. Would your character be the kind of person who actively cares for and maintains their weapons? Or are they functional, but not much on the eyes? Maybe they're unusual looking due to being from different lands, or maybe even different planes. One last thing I'd like to cover here though, is magic. So a lot of classes share spells, so it's worth giving them potentially different vibes to fit with your different characters. This might be something as simple as how your character maybe wields an element, or maybe just the colour of the spell itself. Maybe a wizard gives off a much more controlled burst of magic, whilst the sorcerer explodes with unrelenting, just about controllable power. Unless the good old classic wild magic surges in. Alternatively, it could be something a lot more different. Atasha's hideous laughter delivered by a bard could be very different from one delivered by a warlock. Maybe the bard delivers a fantastic joke which just causes the target to keel over immediately and just start giggling madly, whilst the warlock might get into their target's head, creating horrific sounds of laughter that overpower the target. On the subject of warlocks as well, it's worth keeping in mind how their patron might affect their magic. For example, magic from an infernal patron might have a fiery kick, while an archfey might have more of a naturalistic vibe. All whilst a great elder one might be something more horrible, more indescribable to mortal eyes altogether. Overall though, it's worth keeping in mind that your character can be as personal as you want, and even though the rules might say you have to have leather armor, it doesn't mean that it's just the same leather armor for everybody. So these are some of my tips for building a character in terms of how they look and how they're going to act in the world. As always, this is entirely subjective, these are not hard and fast rules. You can go about doing it however you want, and maybe you have a very different process. If you do, why don't you let me know about it down in the comments below. Also, before I round off this video, I want to give a huge thank you to my friend Steph, who you might know as the Sticky Hunter online. She's a fantastically talented artist who helped out with the writing on this video and has just been a huge help, as well as being just a very lovely human. She's currently taking on commissions for art and is also helping illustrate the upcoming Sidekicks of Ravnica book by Core Artificer, whose work you should also be checking out. Anyways, thank you for swinging on by and as always, have fun. I haven't had this much fun since uh, the last time.